We're now ready to look at the last structure, which is a loop. We've looked at sequential structures, where each statement is executed after the other, decisions, where we make a choice based on a condition, and now loops, which allow us to repeat a block of code over and over. In this particular flow chart, we're going to calculate the class average for an unknown number of students. I need a couple of variables at the beginning of the program, so I'm going to use the assignment box and click right under it to get a second one. In the first one, I'm going to use my first variable here. It's going to be total, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. I'm going to use total as a running total, or what we call an accumulator, to keep up with each student's average. Then I also need another variable that I'm going to call count, because I need another way to actually count how many times I'm coming through the loop, how many students am I processing. So I have both my count and total variables declared and initialized. Then I want to input the number of students in the class. So I'm going to use an input statement and actually prompt the user to enter the number of students in the class. And I'm going to call that variable students. So I'm declaring it here as well as initializing it from the keyboard. And now I'm ready for my loop statement. So I'm going to come and drag the loop over and drop it right under input. The circle says loop. The diamond is where I put the condition that either tells the computer to continue processing through the loop, which is the no path, and it makes a circle, or the yes path, meaning I'm finished and come out to the end of the program. So my condition, and if the condition is here at the top, as it's going to be in this one, it means that I'm doing a while loop, which tests the condition at the top. If I put my statements between the circle and the decision diamond right here, then I'm doing a do while statement, which means it will execute at least once, and the condition is at the bottom or post-test. So I'm going to double click on the decision diamond here because the check that I have that I'm going to set up is that count is greater than or equal to the number of students in the class. If they're equal, if count is greater than or equal to the number of students, then I follow the yes path and come out. If count is not greater than or equal to students, I follow the no path where I need to do a couple of things. The first thing is I need to ask what is the first student's average or what is the student's average. So my prompt here is, what is the average? Or enter the average. And I'm going to store that in the variable average. So I am also declaring that here because it's being initialized from the keyboard. Once I get an average, I need to add it to my running total. So I need an assignment box, a process and I want to set total equal to total plus that student's average. Now look at that statement, because what that says is evaluate on the right hand side of the equal sign. Obviously total is zero to start, so whatever I've input from the keyboard is being added to zero and stored on the left. And then as it comes through, it's always going to take the current value, add the average, and then restore the total here and that makes it a running total, or what is known in the computer world as an accumulator. Directly under that, I'm going to click, because I still have the same tool, the assignment box. I also need to keep up with count, because if count doesn't change, I have no way to get out of the loop. So I'm going to set count equal to count plus 1. I am incrementing by 1 as I come through the loop. So count starts at zero. I ask for the first average. I add it into total, and I add one to zero, making count one. It comes back up, and it checks. Is one greater than or equal to the number of students? And depending on that value, it may exit at this point, or it may go on. So these are the statements that belong in my loop. And I have one statement that I need at the end of the program when I exit from my loop, and that's the output statement. So I'm going to output, and I've got to look for the plus sign, but it does drop it down here at the bottom. And I'm going to actually put the text here, label it class average, and I am going to put a space before I close the quotes for readability.
concatenate, and I'm actually going to use an expression here. I need to take total and divide that by count. Remember, total is storing a running sum, a running total of all of the averages I've, I've input, and every time I come through the loop, I'm adding one to count, so I have the total number of students I've processed. So now let's run the program and see what happens. On this first run, let's do three students. What's the first average? 89. Now notice here that count is 1, students obviously is going to stay 3, and in total I have an 89. So now I'm on the second pass of the loop and it's asking me for the average again. So I'm going to put a 100 in for this student. As it processes through the statements, count is now 2, student stays at 3, and my total is 189 because I had 89 first, then I put 100 in, so it added the two together and stored it in total. I'm on the third pass of the loop. Remember that students has a value of 3, but I'm going to put in this last average, and let's put in a 70. It's going to add the 70 to 189 in the statement right here and it's going to add one more to count so that count will become 3. That means when it comes back up here to test this, it falls out of the loop and prints my class average as an 86.33.